with things in the world getting crazy, there are quite a few people who have decided to go out and buy their first gun or people who are deciding to buy another gun. And a lot of those people are choosing to buy AR-15s, which I think is a fantastic decision. However, a lot of people don't know how to go beyond just a field strip to clean it or how to clean it at all. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to kind of give you guys a breakdown of how to not just pull the, the bolt carrier group and run a swab, but to really tear it down, inspect, and make sure your rifle is going to take care of you and protect you and your family for years to come. So to start, I'm just going to run through the platform here. What you see is a pretty standard AR-15. It's going to look like what most of you are buying at the store, with the exception of I'm running an 18-inch bull barrel, and I am running a digital day and night vision scope, uh, just a little bit of specialization that most of you probably aren't going to be using. Uh, but just to get front to back on it, I am running a standard flash hider. I am running the 18-inch bull barrel. That is a 1 and 8 twist. I'm running a quad rail, 15-inch, bipod hooked on the bottom, as well as a T-grip for moving around. I do have an IR illuminator on this side, and that is just to help with the night mode on this digital scope. And then I am running the ATN x 2 Optic, and that is a day and night vision scope. So it runs a microphone on it. I can pick up and record what I'm doing, uh, but it also has night mode that lets me see into IR. Uh, standard upper, just a generic brand, and then an Anderson lower. Uh, same thing with buffer tube and, and the buttstock, just your, your typical standard issue equipment. Uh, so what you're seeing here is, is going to be the same cleaning process that would be uh, anything that you're going to use uh, for what you're getting off the shelf right now. So your first step is going to be getting the right cleaning supplies. For the sake of this video, I am using all supplies that can be found at Walmart. Remington gun oil. Get in focus there. Gunmaster 223 cleaning kit. and just some standard swabbing patches. You don't need anything fancy to start. You get one of these all-encompassing 223 kits, they're great, they have your punches, you'll see everything as we walk through it. Uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money. And then as you get more guns, because it is a sickness, and if this is your first gun, you're gonna get more. Uh, if you already have a lot of guns, you already know. Uh, you can get some more specialty items, you kind of build your kit as you go. Uh, so don't worry about having all the goodies right up front. But this is a great place to start. You can find it all at Walmart or you used to be able to before the pandemic. I haven't checked lately. Uh, it's, it's just a great platform to build off of. So the number one rule over the course of cleaning and disassembling this gun is going to be safety. Uh, so it's making sure that we're not going to accidentally send a bullet through a wall or through a person uh, over the course of disassembly. So for the sake of this video, I do have my bolt carrier locked open. You can do this by pulling your charging handle back and pushing down your bolt catch. So I've got it locked open, I've got my magazine out, and I've got it on safety. I can inspect visually, I don't see anything, and then for good measure, I just run my pinky down in there, make sure that there's no bullet hiding up in there. Then I'm gonna drop my bolt carrier, and I'm ready to pull the upper off. I'm gonna remove my bipod. If you do have any accessories that get in the way that are easy and quick to remove, just go ahead and pull those off. So now we're going to open up our kit from Walmart and it's got this fantastic nylon punch. Every AR is a little different on how hard it is to push those pins out. Uh, mine is very easy. I do have a little bit of play. Uh, so you'll see these pins. We're going to lay it on its side. I like to pop the back one first, open it up, pull my bolt carrier group out. So what we're going to do is, for the sake of the video, I will pop the front one and then I'll just hold it up closer to the camera so everyone can see. So I pop my back pin, I open it up a little bit, that step doesn't matter as much, I just do that for my own peace of mind. And then you're going to push your pin, make sure you've got it all the way out, and then slide it apart. You now have separated upper and lower. You can inspect this. I'll go through that in a minute. And then we've got our upper. Me having a scope on mine makes it a little more unwieldy. 
uh, that's fine. Most people, you're gonna have a, a smaller sight on it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull my charging handle and my bolt carrier. Your bolt carrier is gonna slide out from that channel. I'm gonna set it aside, pull my charging handle back and pull it up. There is just a tiny little notch on that that you gotta find the right spot and seat that fella down into the channel if you're gonna slide it through. Set that aside. Now we have our upper stripped and ready to run a swab through. Uh, we always wanna make sure that we run swab the path of the bullet, so inside and out. So I'm gonna set that aside. We will do that in a second. So the first thing I like to do is to pull apart my bolt carrier group just to get all the parts out on the table, make sure everything is looking good before I get into the cleaning. So. All right, so we're gonna inspect the bolt carrier group to start, just make sure that we don't see any obvious cracks or defects, no gunk built up. Then we're going to go ahead and pull this little cotter pin. That's gonna release our firing pin. We're gonna set that aside and you can see that it gets gunk built up on it as we shoot. We're gonna leave the gas key. Uh, it is staked, so we're just gonna inspect it and make sure that there's no debris, no cracks, nothing wrong up here, that everything looks the way it should and everything does. I'm gonna push my bolt in. I'm gonna twist its retaining piece here and slide it out. You can see it's dirty as well. You can see by my fingers that it doesn't take long for these to get extremely filthy. We're gonna pull the bolt out. Now at this point we've got an empty bolt carrier group. We can do just another inspection on it, checking in here, looking back here. There's not much that can go wrong on these. They're just a big chunk of metal. So I'm not usually too worried about that. The bolt, however, we are gonna to want to inspect these O-rings, make sure there's no cracks, make sure they're not deformed. Those do need to have a good tight press fit. And then we're going to pull the extractor here by pushing this pin out. We're gonna push down and it does kind of spring out. Set that aside and then we wanna be careful when we pull the extractor back. There is a spring right there. So then we got this so that we can clean it. And then what it allows us to do is it allows us to look inside of this bolt, inside of the firing pin channel, make sure there's no debris or anything that would gunk up our firing pin and cause a failure. Uh, and that is with the AR-15, the, the tolerances are so tight that what we're looking for is any kind of debris that would cause a clearance failure, which is what's gonna cause a lot of these catastrophic ones internally, uh, if you ever do see one. As you can see by now, my hands are pretty dirty just from handling this. This is after one range session, uh, so you can see how the grind, the dirt get built up pretty quick. Most of it is just residue from firing, uh, gets caught in the oil, but that's why we clean it out and put new oil in it. Uh, so for the next step, you know, I just visualize on my, my trigger. Typically, there's not a lot of care that needs to go into this other than just making sure that it's oiled and that there's no debris built up inside of there. So I am gonna put it on fire, I am going to release it slowly. I don't like to let it slam up against my bolt catch. Um, I, I don't know that it's a problem, but it's just anytime you can be gentle with something, be gentle with it. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually going to grab just a rag. And I'm gonna come in and wipe on the backside here just to get an idea of what kind of build up I've got. And you can see, if I can get the focus, it's pretty dirty. Uh, so we're gonna go through here. You know, if you wanted to get crazy, you could pull the pins on this and you could pull your whole fire group out. Um, it's not necessary. Uh, maybe if you do get like in the mud or if you're crawling around, for the most part, your fire control group is gonna be clear. You might have some dust in there. If you need to get an air compressor, maybe blow it out lightly. Uh, and then re-oil, but I do come through and just make sure that there's at least no buildup and that there's nothing obviously wrong. And then I'm gonna come in, oops, and just put a few drops of oil 
down into that spring, into the control group. All right, so I wanna get a little more uh, in-depth shot on the fire con control group for you here. Uh, so what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put it on fire. I release that down and don't let it hit my bolt catch hard. Uh, I am gonna inspect my bolt catch as well, but we're gonna start here. So you can see I've oiled it, it is shiny. But what I was talking about earlier is we get down in here and we just make sure that there's no debris, nothing up into this control group that would cause a failure, that would cause it to bind up. And then just a little bit of oil, you wanna go light on these springs. We don't want so much that it's gonna attract dust and cause it to build up, but we do want just a light film. And then we're gonna work it. See, I've got my secondary works, and then I'm gonna work it in a little bit, and then I'm gonna lock it back. At this point, I can check my bolt carrier, my bolt catch, and make sure. See, I've got a little bit of play there, so I'm gonna to need to inspect that a little more. I mean, it is just roll pin, but we wanna make sure that this, where it does catch your bolt and is that last round hole open, that there is nothing going on with it. Uh, everything else looks clean on it. Everything looks okay. I typically don't even worry about oiling beyond just making sure that it might get some while I'm doing everything else uh, down in into its pin and down into its spring. Uh, other than that, we're gonna double check this buffer tube. Like I said, it's not uh, a critical fail component for you know getting debris into it for most of us because we're not crawling through the mud. Uh, you can run down into this tube if you want and I do typically just inspect this. I do wipe my spring down and just make sure oops, that there's nothing bad going on there. Lightly oil it and then put it back in. If you're superstitious like me, you always make sure it goes in the same spot. If you're not good on you, just put it back. Make, I like to make sure that it's setting just right against that pin and just double check, give it a few test bumps. Uh, at that point, your lower is ready to go. It is complete. Everything looks good on it. I'm gonna set it aside and move on to the next station. So at this point, we've got the lower, the bolt carrier group, everything all torn down, cleaned. We haven't put it back together yet. Uh, I will step in and perform the cleaning on the upper before I put everything back together just to make sure We've all got everything oiled and then everything goes back together oiled. So to start, I take my brass rods, run them down onto my little handle, and then I grab this little throat cleaner and bore brush, and to start I oil this and I just give my, my throat of my barrel a little scrub. You're gonna wipe it out after, so don't worry about over oiling it or anything like that. Make sure you've got something down so your spouse doesn't kill you for getting uh, oil all over their furniture. And then we're gonna come in from the back here, just like so. And we're gonna just, don't push all the way through. You're just cleaning that throat all the way up into where the round is gonna seat. Make sure it does have a tendency to want to unscrew itself. So you do have to kind of periodically retighten as you go. And at this point, you're also inspecting to make sure that you don't see any obvious signs of like rust or any cracks or any debris uh, because you don't want to jam that straight down your board. Everything looks good there. I'm gonna pull that out. And then we're gonna move on to if you've got a rod, you can run the rod all the way down. I like to run the snake. I run it on all my stuff. I have a big wooly one I run on like my hunting rifles too. Uh, it just makes life easier and you don't have to worry about pulling it back down the bore. You just pull it out and you're done. So I've always been a big fan of them. And then when I'm done, instead of having a bunch of brass rods, I just coil it back up and I'm good to go. So then I'm going to run my other uh, bore brush. We're going to oil it lightly and then we're going to run it straight down 
and out. If you've got a muzzle device, uh, like on my other AR, I run a linear compensator. It can get a little tricky running out the end here, so you might need to get creative, or you might need to maybe run a rod just because you can't get out that, that linear comp. Um, or take the comp off if you're feeling comfortable with that. But run that through. Uh, if you've got really heavy buildup, if you haven't cleaned it in a while, you might need to run that through a few times just to get it you know, cleaned out and busted up. Uh, I don't go crazy with that just because uh, I don't like running metal down my, uh, my barrel, even though I know it's not a big deal because it is copper. And then once we've done that, we're gonna hook on our little piece to grab our rags, pull it through, make sure that it's even, and then we're just gonna lightly oil both sides, and then same thing, just run it down. It's okay if you struggle like I do. And it goes pretty easy on these ARs. But you can see first pass, just how filthy that is. That's from one range session. Uh, it, they just, they get dirty. It's not a big deal. Unless you don't clean it, then it is. And then I'll run typically two oily rags to one or two dry rags and just kind of alternate. Uh, you're going to go through this and the way you finish is going to depend on if you're taking it out or if you're storing it, right? I don't typically leave a heavy layer of oil in my ARs because I use all of them pretty much weekly or monthly. And so I don't worry about leaving a big heavy layer like I do with like maybe my hunting rifle in the off season. Um, it, it up, it's up to the person, right? You can always leave a heavier layer of oil in and then just run a rag through before you go shoot. Um, you know, you can read online. Some guys say if you leave too much oil in it when you shoot, it just gets super dirty. Uh, some guys say it makes it super inaccurate, which I think is actually pretty well proven. Uh, you got to get all that oil shot out, um, but you can always just run a rag down or just like they're saying, you know, you shoot it out and it's just going to catch and build up the dirt and the fouling. But you can see just a few rags in, maybe, just how much better it gets. So got my barrel cleaned out. We run through until we've got a clean rag. Everything is good to go there. And then another step with these ARs is the way your system works, your gas is running down that tube and it's coming right out here and it's blowing on that gas key and kicking your bolt open. Well, what that does is that leaves a lot of, of gunk and black all up in here and it gets very dirty. So. What I do is I take my pick and I just run on the sides of my gas key or my gas tube and I just bunch it up in there and I just give it a good wipe down. This stuff isn't, I don't shoot corrosive ammo. Uh, if you do, you gotta be really on top of it. Um, it doesn't, you know, carbonate or carburize up in there, not carbonate. Uh, it doesn't like carburize up and, and get a huge amount of carbon buildup, but uh, that's because I stay on top of it as well. Uh, it's pretty easy to wipe down within one pass of using this guy and a uh, rag back and forth. It looks almost brand new. Uh, so I typically just do that up and down the channel as well and take that filthy rag and just run one more. Always be gentle. I mean, I don't use hard metal tools, but just remember 
most everything on an AR-15 is plastic or aluminum, and even if it's hard anodized, um, you could scratch it, you can, uh, you can ding it up if you're not careful. They can take a beating, uh, it just be as careful as you can. Uh, so at that point, the upper is complete. It's ready to go back together. Uh, I do have kind of oily, messy hands, so once I get it back together, I'll wipe it down and just make sure that there's nothing you know built up on the outside. Uh, but we're ready to reassemble. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put that together. It's gonna be the reverse of how you took it apart. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bolt carrier, or our bolt to put back in our bolt carrier. We're going to put our extractor that we've cleaned back on top of it. We're gonna push it down and line up that pin in the hole and just shove it through. Make sure that that bolt is flush in there. Make sure it's not bound up. Everything looks good on that. We're gonna slide it back into our bolt carrier. Make sure that you've got it the right direction. You're gonna be really surprised the next time you go to fire, even if it would, I don't know if it would even, if it would even lock in, um, but make sure you don't have it flipped upside down or your ejectors here, it's gonna jam a shell, a uh, spent shell down in. So make sure your ejector's on the right side with your ejector pin on the bottom left. Then we're gonna run our keeper down in it and then twist it 90 degrees so that it stays in. I like to push it forward like that. Drop my clean firing pin down in and cotter pin goes right inside and should just pop right in there. Sometimes they'll fight you a little bit. Uh, don't freak out, just kind of wiggle it, make sure you've got everything adjusted. And then I just do a couple press checks, make sure everything's cycling around on the bolt and then make sure that when it's locked as if it was in battery, that I can see my firing pin sticking out when I push it forward. So when the hammer hits, I wanna make sure that that pin actually is gonna be exposed. So we've got that all together. We're gonna to put it back into our upper. And so the trick with the upper, a lot of people are gonna fumble with this if they haven't cleaned one of these before, is you put the charging handle in first, you gotta slide it in. And I'll put this closer to the camera here. You gotta slide it in, find your gap, and put it all the way in, right? And then you've got it in, you can slide it a bit back, and then ride that channel with your, your gas key, and then push it until it locks all in. At that point, your, your flap is open, your dust flap, you've got your upper reassembled. I'll close it just for the sake of keeping it out of the way. Push these back together. Pop them in, and you've got your AR-15 cleaned completely and ready to go. I'll give it a final wipe down just to make sure there's no oil on the handles or anything like that from my greasy hands. Make sure my scope is clean and I'm ready to go out and shoot it again. Now I've got everything back together. The rifle is ready to rock and roll. Uh, if you've got any questions, put a comment down below. Uh, I want to be doing some more of these videos, so any suggestions you guys have for maybe some common firearm questions or common firearms that you want to see disassembled, uh, share it below. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching.